Next tonight, NME once called her one of the greatest lyricists in the world, and PJ Harvey is certainly one of the most thoughtful and thought-provoking rock stars. Her eighth solo album, Let England Shake, bristles with questions of nationhood and conflict. Miranda Sawyer went to meet her. PJ Harvey is an artist who never stands still. Each of her albums is self-contained with its own particular atmosphere and she herself takes on many personas for the sake of her music. She can move from confrontational 50-foot queenie to exuberant city lover, from post-punk guitar to affecting broken piano. Her latest album, Let England Shake, was recorded here in Dorset and covers war, civil unrest and England's violent roots. So, let's start from the beginning. Where did the idea for this LP come from? One of the um, markers that I kept in the forefront of my mind when I was writing and one of the instigators of the whole project was when I began to think about there are officially appointed war artists and poets. There are people that are always on the front line of whatever conflict zone there is. And I began to wonder where the song equivalent was, you know, where was the officially appointed songwriter? <laughs> Can I be that? Um, <laughs> and obviously there isn't a post of such. So in some ways in my mind I pointed myself in that position and asked myself that question, okay, how would I report back and try to do it in an impartial way? and an unbiased way, but a very human way. Just, just the simple witness, the, narr the, the storyteller, the, yeah. the person that was on the ground and saw it happen. Yeah, like, a, like war poets. Yes, like war poets or like any foreign correspondent, really. Um, but trying to do that through song. Started with the lyrics, didn't you? Certain so the lyrics, you can read the lyrics entirely separately, and they're like they're like poems. Mm. The way that I write has changed very gradually, but has changed in that I concentrate pretty much solely on words for great periods of time, and some of those words remain as poems, and some become short prose. It's really become my starting point that the words have to work first. I sang them for a long time a cappella almost so that my intellect was not particularly engaged. And I ended up with very simple, almost nursery-like uh, quality to the melody. Yeah. I wanted the melody be, to be so simple that it could be sung from one person to another, it would be remembered straight away. It's that simple. That harks back to how music ever begins in the tradition of storytelling. Um, folk music was often very simple because it's just passed on from one generation to another. Everybody remembers it, it was never written down because the melodies have this simple, very strong quality to them. For the past 20 years, PJ Harvey has been a unique voice in the British music scene. In that time, she's recorded eight solo albums and collaborated with artists such as Björk, John Parrish, Nick Cave and Tom York, who appeared on her 2001 Mercury Award-winning album, Stories from the City, Stories from the Sea. Most recently, she's worked with Francis Ford Coppola for his magazine All Story, revealing another one of her artistic talents. I have got something I want to show you, which is something that you've done, which is uh, some illustrations you did for Francis Ford Coppola's magazine. I mean, do you want to talk about this a little yeah, bit? Because there's to. some, there's some bits in here that I kind of 
related to the album a bit, but I might be wrong, so I wanted to ask you about them. These ones. Yeah, you're right. You're, Those ones. That's, you're right on the ball. I've always painted, I've always drawn. I come from, initially came from a, the visual arts background before I even began music. But the first opportunity I've ever had to show any of my work was um, in this magazine. I did a whole series of people standing in this position. <laughs> <laughs> and it, they were drawn while I was writing and recording the record. This is a kind of, to me, an English landscape, a completely un-English character. Mm -hmm. It does relate to the record in the way the cycle keeps happening. So I've got all these people standing in the same position from an entirely different era. You can obviously see what you're hearing in the yeah. record. Yeah. Yeah, how so, weird, yeah. Yeah, oh, really, that's really enthralling, that. I mean, do you have pictures in your head that you want to illustrate? Everything goes together, so I'm, 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 always, I'm always painting, I'm always writing words. I always have music just coursing through my system, though I rarely sing or play an instrument unless I have I'm specifically writing a song. I have found that over the years. I'm not, I don't think I'm really a musician. I'm much more interested in the words and then I need to make a bed for them. Let me watch night fall on the river. Moon rise, earth can turn to silver. The sky move, the ocean shimmer. The head shake, the last living rose. Quiver. I feel like I've just begun. That's the strongest feeling. I felt that with this record in particular, I've uncovered a new way of writing that's just the beginning for me. I feel like I've got so much yet to do, and that's a wonderful feeling. Let England Shake is released on the 14th of February.